Today on Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about unit conversions. It's basically just a way to take a, a measured quantity from one set of units to another set of units. So say you know how long you've run in kilometers and you want to know how far that is in miles. That's an example of something we could figure out using unit conversion. Or say that you knew how many hours you ran for and you wanted to know how many seconds you ran for. That's another example of unit conversion. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go step by step through several types of unit conversions so you can figure out how to use this process. The first example actually asks us to take five kilometers and go to miles. So if you've run a 5K, which is a common running length in the United States, you might've asked yourself, okay, how many miles did I just run? And we can answer that question using this unit conversion process. I've broken this down into four steps. Step one, just says write the starting quantity. What's the starting quantity? That's the guy you begin with. And in this problem, it's five kilometers because that's what we were given. It says, how long is a five kilometer race in miles? So that means we know five kilometers, but we don't know is the distance in miles. So five kilometers is our starting quantity. And we're just gonna write that guy down here. Step two says, write the target units with a space. So the target units, what's that? That's basically what we wanna to get to. And in this case, it's miles. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write that target unit and we're gonna leave a space. So we're gonna say put an equal sign and we're gonna put miles, which we'll abbreviate MI. So this basically has set up our problem. We wanna go from kilometers to miles. Step three is really the most involved step of this process, which is writing the conversion factor. The conversion factor is just what's gonna take us from our starting units to our ending units. And to make this extra clear, I've broken down the process of writing a conversion factor into these three steps that you see at the bottom of the screen. So step one for writing the conversion factor just says write a set of parentheses with a line. We're also gonna add a multiplication sign. So we're just gonna put times, and then an open parentheses, a closed parentheses with a line through the middle. So that's step A. Then we're told in part B, put the starting units on the bottom and the ending units on top. So the starting units in this case are kilometers. That's what we're starting with. That's on the left-hand side. And so you can see why we set up the problem the way we did, because writing our starting quantity on the left-hand side has allowed us to go ahead and know what to write on the bottom of that conversion factor. And now we need to fill in the top. And it says, write our ending units in the top side. And our ending units are miles. We want to get to miles. So we're going to write miles up here. Now, the last part of filling in this conversion factor says fill in the conversion factor from the equality. And the equality is just that other bit of information we were given with the problem. So right up here, this one mile equals 1.6 kilometers is the equality. That's just telling you how many miles are in a kilometer. I'll erase that highlighting, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the number that's next to miles, so we see that there's a 1 next to the mile, and we're going to write that 1 next to the mile in our conversion factor, so that means a 1 goes up top. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the number next to kilometers, 1.6, and we're going to write that next to kilometers in our conversion factor. Now. It would be very wrong if we wrote our 1.6 on the top because 1.6 doesn't go with the miles in our equality, it goes with the kilometers. So you have to make sure you write the one and the 1.6 with their correct units in the conversion factor. Now we're basically done. The last step is we just multiply through. So we're gonna multiply our five kilometers by one and divide by 1.6. So when we plug that into our calculator, which you should go ahead and do, we get three Point one. So it turns out that 3.1 miles is the same as 5 kilometers. So if you've ran a 5K, you ran 3.1 miles. It's always important to remember that's what we're doing in a unit conversion. We're just expressing the same amount of stuff or the same distance or the same amount of time with a different unit. So why does this process work? Well, if you notice, kilometers is up top at the beginning of our problem, that KM right there, and that's actually gonna cancel out with the kilometers on the bottom of our conversion factor. When I take kilometers and divide it by kilometers, 
just cancels out. Just like if I take five and divide it by five in an algebra equation, it cancels out. So we've gotten rid of our kilometers and we're left with just miles. And that's why this conversion process works. So we're gonna do a couple more examples so you can get the hang of this. All right, now we wanna know how many dollars is my five euro Coke. So if you've been to Europe and bought a Coke, you know they're extremely overpriced. So you might've thought, okay, yeah, it's five euros. Sounds like too much. How many dollars is that? That's what we can figure out with this unit conversion process. So again, step one just says, write our starting quantity. Our starting quantity in this case is five euros. That's the information we're given. So I'm gonna write five euros over here on the right hand side. All right. And now I wanna write my target units with a space. What are my target units? Well, what I'm trying to get to is dollars. It says how many dollars is my five euro Coke? So what I wanna to get to is dollars. So I'm gonna write dollars on the other side of the screen. And we should really leave a space after our equal sign because that's where we're gonna write our answer. All right, so five euros is equal to how many dollars? We basically set up our problem there. Now we're gonna to go to write the conversion factor. So when we write the conversion factor, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna write those parentheses with that multiplication sign, and we're gonna put a line through the middle. Then part B of writing the conversion factor says, write our starting units on the bottom. So what we started with is a euro, and that's what we're gonna write on the bottom. And then it says, write our ending units on top, and we wanna to get to a dollar, so we're gonna write dollars on top. Notice again, I'm not writing any numbers in this part, all I'm doing is writing the units. So now, the last part of writing the conversion factor. It says fill in that conversion factor from the equality. So what number goes with dollars? Well, I look up at my equality and I see 1.1 next to the dollars. So that means I'm gonna write 1.1 next to the dollars in my conversion factor. Similarly, I see a one next to the euro. So I'm gonna write one next to my euros. So now I have five euros and I'm gonna multiply that by 1.1 dollars and divide by one euro. And that's gonna give me 5.5 dollars. .5 so your five euro Coke cost you five and a half dollars. Overpriced. All right, again, our euros notice canceled out. We took euros, we divided by euros. And that leaves us with just dollars. That's the kind of fundamental reason that our unit conversion process works here, is we're canceling out that unit. All right, next example, we want to know how many milliliters are in 12 ounces. So you pick up that 12 ounce Coke that you just paid too much for, you just paid your five and a half dollars for, how many milliliters are in that 12 ounce Coke? So we're gonna follow the same steps here. We're gonna write our starting quantity. Step one says write our starting quantity and we're gonna write that on the left hand side. And in this case, our starting quantity is those 12 ounces. And we're gonna abbreviate ounce OZ. So 12 OZ. So we have 12 ounces and we're going to, our target units are milliliters. Now the, the units, the abbreviation for milliliters is ML. So I'm gonna abbreviate milliliters, ML. And now I'm on to step three, writing the conversion factor. So writing the conversion factor, remember first thing I'm gonna do is write the time sign with these parentheses. And then I'm gonna fill in that conversion factor with some units. So I know that I'm starting with ounces, so I'm gonna write ounces on the bottom, that's gonna allow them to cancel out. I know that I'm going to milliliters, so I'm gonna write milliliters on top, that's what I'm gonna be left with. And now I fill in that conversion factor from the equality. So what number goes with ounces? I look at my equality and I see, ah, one goes with my ounces. And then I say, oh, what number goes with my milliliters? 30. So that's the number that I'm gonna go ahead and write next to milliliters. And then all I have to do is multiply that guy through and we're gonna see that we get 360 milliliters. And again, our ounces here cancel out. So 12 ounces is 360 milliliters. That does it for this episode of Real Chemistry. Subscribe to my station to see other YouTube videos or visit my channel to see a full list. Also, please leave any questions or comments below this video and I'll answer them.